You are loved with an everlasting love. That's what the Bible says. And underneath are the everlasting arms. This is your friend, Elizabeth Elliot. We've been telling the story of five American missionaries who had gone into the edge of Alca territory in the eastern jungle of Ecuador. The Alcas were a people who were known to be savages, Stone Age people, naked people, with whom no missionary had ever had contact, people who had never heard the name of Jesus. They had set up a camp. They had had a friendly contact. Nate Saint, the pilot of a small plane, had flown over the Alca houses and on January the 8th, 1956, had seen 10 Alcas headed in the direction of the missionary's camp. He radioed back to his wife, this is it, they're on their way. We'll talk to you at 4.30 this afternoon. At 4.30 sharp, Marge Saint eagerly switched on the radio receiver in Shelmeda. This was the moment when the big news would come. Had the men been invited to follow the Alcas to their houses? What further developments would Nate be able to report? She looked at her watch again. Yes, it was at least 4.30. No sound from Palm Beach. She and Olive hunched close to the radio. The atmosphere was not giving any interference. Perhaps Nate's watch had run a little slow. In Atahuno, Mary Lou and Barbara had their radio on, too. Silence. They waited a few minutes, then called Shelmeda. Atahuno calling Shelmeda. Atahuno standing by for Shelmeda. Any word from Palm Beach, Marge? Over. Shelmeda standing by. No, no word as yet. We'll be standing by. Not a crackle broke the silence. Were the men so preoccupied with entertaining their visitors that they had forgotten the planned contact? Five minutes? Ten minutes? No, it was inconceivable that all five would forget. It was the first time since Nate had started jungle flying in 1948 that he and Marge had been out of contact even for an hour. But perhaps their radio was not functioning. It happened occasionally. The women clung to each little hope. In Atahuno, Barbara and little Beth Udarian had primped up a bit since it had been planned that Raj would come to Atahuno that night while Pete took a turn sleeping in the treehouse. Surely the little plane would come winging over the treetops before sundown. They walked up and down the airstrip, waiting, waiting. I knew nothing until the next morning at 7 o'clock. Marge called me at 7 o'clock to tell me that nothing had been heard from the men since yesterday. Would you please come back at 10 o'clock and stand by for Johnny's report, Marge said. Johnny Keenan, the other pilot, was going to fly over the territory and see if he could see what had happened. This was the first that I knew that anything was amiss. And the words that came to my mind immediately were from Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. God was not telling me that I would not have to pass through the waters. He was simply saying, I will be with thee. I went back upstairs to continue teaching the Indian girls' literacy class, praying silently, Lord, let not the waters overflow. At about 9.30, Johnny's report came through. Marge relayed it to me in Shandia. Johnny has found the plane on the beach. All the fabric is stripped off. There is no sign of the fellows. I remember my shock at the thought that the plane was wrecked. I remember a greater shock when Marge's voice came on saying, I don't care what happens to the old plane. All I want is for the fellows to come back. It really hadn't dawned on me that it could be quite that serious. Then I realized the fabric stripped from the plane. That means the Alcas did it. That means the Alcas must have been hostile. What else did they do? Larry Montgomery, a pilot with Wycliffe Bible Translators, made contact immediately with General 
William K. Harrison, the commander-in-chief of the Caribbean Command of the U.S. Air Rescue Service in Panama. The news flashed around the world. Five men were missing in Alca territory. Forces were set in motion, including the prayers of thousands. A ground party was formed. Our hopes were raised. On Wednesday, Johnny Keenan took off again in MAF's second Piper cruiser, the twin to Nate's plane, on his fourth flight over Palm Beach to see if there were any signs of life. Marge, who had hardly left the radio since Sunday afternoon, stood by for Johnny's report. Barbara, Olive, and I were upstairs. Suddenly Marge called, Betty, Barbara, Olive. I raced down the stairs. Marge was standing with her head against the radio, her eyes closed. After a while she spoke. They found one body. A quarter mile down the river from the little denuded plain, Johnny had sighted a body floating face down in the water, dressed in cocky pants and white T-shirt, the usual uniform of the men. It's not Raj, Barb said. He was wearing blue jeans. As the ground party made their way toward the missionary camp, they hoped that they would meet at least one of the five men. Suddenly they came face to face with a party of Quechua Indians who had gone ahead of the missionary ground party. We found Senor Eduardo's body, they said, Ed McCulley. You did? How do you know? Here's his watch. Here's his wedding ring. They knew. Back in Shalmetta, there were babies to be taken care of, meals to be cooked, guests galore because people had poured in from all over offering to help us. The radio had to be manned. Mechanics were working on the blades of the helicopter that had been sent down from the Caribbean. And this was what I wrote in my diary. Johnny's Piper and the helicopter are headed for Atahuno. Also the Navy R-4D with Captain McGee and Major Nuremberg in a helicopter. 3 p.m., the aircraft are stacking up over the site of the incident now. I feel sick at my stomach. 320. Blessed is she that believed. The aircraft are circling the site. 330. Yea, in the way of thy judgment, O Lord, we have waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name. 4 o'clock. Still circling. Hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him. We had no other hope except God at this point. The U.S. Navy R-4D and an amphibian of the Air Rescue Service and the Ecuadorian Air Force were close by. But as the psalm says, a horse is a vain thing for safety, and so is an R-4D, an amphibian or a helicopter. When the aircraft returned to Atahuno, once on the ground, Major Nuremberg, with his face showing the strain, confirmed our suspicions. Speaking in low tones to the tight circle of military men, he explained that McCulley's body, identified by the small party of Quichuas the day before, was now gone from the beach, no doubt washed away by the rain and higher water in the night. He leafed through his notebook for a moment, a few Indians stood silent in the tall grass nearby, listening, watching. We found four in the river, Nuremberg said finally. I don't think identification will be possible from what I have here, indicating his notebook. One of them might be Macaulay. He did not have to say what was in every mind. There might be one who got away possibly wounded, still in the jungle. How to inform the wives was the question uppermost in their minds. Should Mary Lou be told, she was right at Atahuno in the house, seven months pregnant. We'd better wait, Nuremberg said. DeWitt is running this show. Well, finally they came back. Barbara Udarian wrote in her diary, tonight the captain told us of his finding four bodies in the river. One had T-shirt and blue jeans. Raj was the only one who wore them. God gave me this verse two days ago. 
Psalm 48, 14. This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. As I came face to face with the news of Raja's death, my heart was filled with praise. He was worthy of his home going. Help me, Lord, to be both mummy and daddy, to know wisdom and instruction. Tonight, Beth prayed for daddy in heaven and asked me if daddy would come down from heaven to get a letter she wanted to write to him. I said, he can't come down, Beth. He's with Jesus. She said, but Jesus can help him come down and God will take his hand so he won't slip. I wrote a letter to the Mission family trying to explain the peace I have. I want to be free of self-pity. It is a tool of Satan to rot away a life. I am sure that this is the perfect will of God. Many will say, why did Raj get mixed up in this when his work was with Hevados? Because Raj came to do the will of him that sent him. The Lord has closed our hearts to grief and hysteria and filled in with his perfect peace. Gateway to Joy 95, Silence in the Jungle.